Statins, are they the magic bullet drug to prevent high cholesterol and cardiovascular disease, or are they an ingenious scheme by Big Pharma to boost profits? In today's Iron Report, we'll be hearing from three medical professionals about their thoughts on the prescription of statins, who should be using them, and whether or not there is an advantage to the new drugs available on the market. I'm Daniel Buzo, and this is the Iron Report. But firstly, how do statins work? Here we can see the HMG-CoA moving towards the HMG-CoA reductase enzyme in the liver. This is what occurs in the synthesis of cholesterol. The HMG-CoA reductase enzyme converts HMG-CoA to mevalonate using NADPH. Mevalonate is the precursor for a number of lipids as well as cholesterol. Statins competitively inhibit the HMG-CoA reductase enzyme, hence cholesterol cannot be produced. When the body detects reduced LDL and cholesterol levels in the liver, it wants to balance this out. It does this by generating new LDL receptors, absorbing LDL from the blood and ultimately reducing cholesterol. But what do the health professionals think? Oh, excuse me, statins. There have actually been a lot of negative media around statins, especially around whether statins are currently being overprescribed. Statins are in fact one of the most effective lipid-lowering drugs available on the market today. There has been an increase in individuals with high cholesterol within the last decade, with more than a third of Australian adults having high cholesterol. High cholesterol is associated with heart disease and strokes. Statins, such as atorvastatin, which is branded Lipitor, can actually lower LDL, thus preventing the risk of heart attacks and strokes. Newer statins, such as Lavalo, have even higher LDL-lowering capabilities. Newer statins also have fewer side effects, less interactions with drugs, and are more tolerable in the elderly. Statins can cause adverse effects, most commonly liver toxicity, myopathy, and rhabdomyolysis. Some trials have reported myopathy occurring in up to 20% of patients receiving statin treatment. Other trials have reported a correlation between statin use and type 2 diabetes, as well as hemorrhagic stroke. Although these haven't been reported in great numbers, with increasing statin use, this could constitute a large amount of people. Are they overprescribed and overused? Well, I think we only need to look at the fact that the prescriptions of statins used increased by 1,200% in the 10 years between 1995 and 2005. To add to this, Australia has the highest prescription rate out of any OCED country. Their use as a primary prevention strategy in Australia is not well targeted. Those living in rural and remote areas are at a greater risk category of CVD events, but are prescribed statins at half the rate of those living in urban areas. In addition, Australians also pay one of the highest premiums for statins in the world, with the PBS endorsing patent brands over the generic counterparts. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, I'll be there in a moment. No, I'm just doing an interview. Mm. Oh, she's in the theatre? Okay, just give me five minutes. Okay, yeah, bye. Right, sorry about that. Um, clinical evidence has demonstrated that the efficacy of statin treatment in the prevention of CVD, um, but, but nearly half the patients taking these statins discontinue their use, largely due to side effects that it causes. Um, what's more is many patients receiving statins are elderly or, or they have comorbid conditions, which increases potential for drug-drug interactions. In my experience, most Im the most important thing to keep in mind when prescribing statins is that they are not for everybody, but that doesn't mean it shouldn't be used. So primary prevention of any disease should always be about what the patient can change about their own life first before any drug intervention is used. The point that I'd like to stress is that statins are great in preventing further CVD events because the truth is doctors are far from knowing anything or rather everything about statins. Are they right for everybody with high cholesterol? What, what happens when you take a statin for decades? And can statins help prevent other diseases or questions we have to keep in mind? With the increasing incidence of cardiovascular disease and high cholesterol, there is no doubt that the statin debate will continue for many years. In high-risk patients, a statin may be the treatment of choice, but in cases of primary prevention, are you more willing to change your diet and exercise habits, or would you rather pay for a statin and risk the side effects? 
I'm Daniel Buzo, and this has been The Iron Report.